Debbie out walking. It's a Monday morning, a little after seven, getting some steps in. It's been raining, nasty and cold, but my body was thirsty to move. And I don't have a gym membership anymore. My gym is these sneakers and my legs. So, sorry. It's cold. I'll be back. on my walk this morning I'm going a little further and it's really nice around in the back here nice woods coming up on the Hillsboro River I love my neighborhood <laughs> nice and quiet neighbors out getting on their way when I first got the job that I have I didn't think it was a good thing to go to work so late but now I know why I can get out and go walking, shower, get ready, and be to work. But today, I'm going to work at 11. I work from 11 till 8. So, stay tuned for the Will and Deb show. I'm on the back end now. <laughs> Hello. It's a good Monday today. Taking my lunch break. Yes, this is a Debbie lunch break. Just finished my uh, scripture writing and journaling. Decided I would chat with you guys for a little bit. Um, it's cold here in Florida today. We had a rainy day yesterday. It rained practically. Well, it did rain all day. I mean, nonstop, just poured and poured and poured all day. And it was freezing cold. We in Florida don't do well with that kind of stuff. <laughs> so, I know we complain and complain, but it, it's, it's really beautiful out today. It's just chilly. But I'm sitting out, because I'm sitting in the sun, it makes it warm for me. I was going to sit in the car, but I think it's colder in the car because our cars are in a garage here. So I sat out here in the sun and it feels great. I'm not, I'm covered and not feeling bad at all. But I um, wanted to get on and just say hello. Hope you caught the Deb and Will show this morning. We had a... A lot of the good little bandering back and forth um, and we have a little uh, challenge going on with Deb and Will because we are going to put up our uh, ring system it's a camera system for monitoring our home outside doorbell it's a ring doorbell it's really cool because it will, um, and some of you may have watched videos for it or have it in your home, but it can tell when someone walks up to your door. So we had a little issue with uh, porch pirates here in our neighborhood, and they, uh, they did, don't discriminate. They go to good neighborhoods, bad neighborhoods, any neighborhood where they see you have some packages delivered and they will take, and it was very rampant, of course, in December because people were ordering gifts. So 
but we had a television stolen, uh, we think. We're not positive if the, the, you, the FedEx guy may have took it or what happened, but it was gone so quickly, it just, um, the police recommended that we get this uh, camera for our outside. And so we have it, and my husband wants to put it up a certain way, and me and, my, me and our son wants to put it up a certain way, and he has told us, challenged us, that if we want it that way, we have to put it up. So um, I'm not too mechanically good, but my son can do it. He's very electronic and mechanical. He can do things. So I'm putting my trust in him to put it up the way that we want it up. If we don't do it within a certain, within the week, then my husband is going to put it up the way he wants it. So stay in touch and, and I'll give you an update and even show you how it's up there. But um, we, we really need it up because we are avid Amazon people and we never had any problems until the stupid uh, FedEx guy left a television on the doorstep without a signature. So we'll see how that goes. But um, I wanted to share something with you all. Let me see how much time I have here. That, that really upset me over the weekend because I went to my hair salon and got my hair done, you know, and that's a day that most of the time you want to relax and, and, and enjoy and I get along very well with my, my stylist. Uh, we, we were both Christians and we talk about stuff and everything and so it's just kind of a day for relaxation for me. Well, this Saturday, someone was in the salon that had left their six-year-old daughter who was getting her hair straightened for the very first time that ticked me off <laughs> I'm sorry I gotta say it but it just ticked me off because I mean your child is a, you know when you have I had a son so um, I took him to get his hair cut but the very first time they're getting anything done professionally to their hair, the mother or the father needs to be there with them. She came in, dropped this little girl off, and let them wash and roll her hair, and then it was coming to the point where they were going to blow dry it and straighten it and flat iron it. She had beautiful hair, pretty little girl. So she's sitting in the chair next to me, and I said, you know, she started to cry. So I was comforting her and trying to tell her it's gonna be good. You're gonna be, it's gonna be even more beautiful when they get done. Be patient, it's worth it. She, I mean, they, she, they're blow drying it. She needed her mother. How can you leave a six year old by herself with strangers to experience the first time getting her hair done professionally. That really ticked me off. But I comforted her, you know, we got her through it. And then her mom comes in like when it's halfway done and the little girl, I mean, she really boo-hoo cried. And she comes in and che I'm checking on you and brought her some McDonald's fries and then she left her again. And we trying to tell her she's been upset. She's been crying. She left that little girl again. I wanted to <laughs> grab her and shake her and tell her, don't leave her here. I mean, I don't know. I guess mothering has changed. <laughs> I don't know. But to me, that's child abuse. You can't leave a little six-year-old there by herself. So, needless to say, my little relaxing experience didn't <laughs> relax me too much. I was mad the whole time I was there because that woman was leaving that baby there. But honestly, I think the salon should not have allowed it. They should have told her, you can't leave her here. If I was the owner of that salon, you cannot leave a child here alone. Because then they're responsible for if something happens to her or if somebody could take her. What if they, you know, it just blew my mind. 
and that's my little rant for today don't leave your kids in the salon or to the barber shop or anywhere alone especially if it's their first experience we got to do better people we got to do better that's a little Debbie rant so I'm gonna be going back to work and love you all peace take care good afternoon it's a Debbie lunch break and uh, Debbie decided to walk before she did her video so I'm a little out of breath but it was a good walk it a mile and a half can you believe that on my lunch break the girl is kicking it <laughs> really not really I remember before my knee issues I would do almost five miles in, in the mornings when I used to go but um, and I think that we all should just think about that you know walking is the simplest exercise and we should be thankful and grateful that we can walk I didn't realize how precious my knees and my feet were until I couldn't use them um, and I think I've told this story a while ago but it's actually been like two and a half years. It was the same year that my husband had his incident. I was, um, I think my body was just stressed. <laughs> and, and I simply just was walking out to my car one day on my lunch break and my knee gave out on me, it popped. It, it made a popping sound. It was kind of stiff and then it popped. And you think when it pops, you know, okay, the stiffness is going to go away. I could not even put pressure on that knee. I had to practically crawl back into the building and was in the back of the, the branch where I worked and, and sat down. I couldn't walk. So I had to call somebody to to come back and check on me because I was in back in what we call the community room and I could not move. That my right knee was shot. And that was a scary thing. I couldn't put any pressure on it. It just was limp. It was like it wasn't connected or something. And when I did try to put pressure on it, it hurt like hell. So my husband and my son came and they rolled me out to the car. I got in the car and took me to the emergency room. And when we got there, of course you have to wait forever in the emergency room unless you're bleeding or shot. <laughs> but um, we waited there almost all evening and they did x-rays, they did all kinds of stuff and, and checked it out. It wasn't broken. And they and in in the emergency room they couldn't really tell what was wrong with it. They just gave me some pain pills, wrapped it up, and gave me some crutches. Told me make an appointment with an orthopedic doctor. So I made the point. I don't even remember was it the Thursday or Friday or whatever, but made the appointment for the next day. Luckily they could get me in, and. Uh, they did an MRI, more x-rays, and all of this stuff, and, and looked at it, and I had torn my meniscus. And that sound, to me, sounded like something that an athlete does, <laughs> you know, but, um, and you should, I didn't think that you could just do that by just walking, but it tore my meniscus. So, the route we were going to take was just to do, med they gave me some meds for pain, of course, and that I was going to have to let it just heal, keep it, uh, keep it elevated when you're sitting and exercise it 
and they gave me some non some inflammation medication meloxicam and so he said we'll give it you know a few months the only solution is you know to let it heal within six months or so and then um, or have surgery so as long as I took that meloxicam I could walk on it and it was good doing all of that I could even do a little exercise and stuff but I did that for about a year my stomach said no you're not gonna put this stuff on me <laughs> if you know anything about acetaminophen or all of those the anti-inflammatory stuff it is horrible on your stomach so my stomach didn't want that I started to have uh, like ulcer symptoms and went to the doctor after, and that this had been a year of me taking that stuff and messing up my stomach so um, he said well the only alternative is surgery didn't want to do surgery but I had to and thank God I did that I wish I had done it <laughs> the year before because it was awesome they went in and cleaned it all out repaired it and after about a week off of it being at home and stuff actually they wanted me to walk on it within a day or two they want you to walk on it and so it doesn't get too stiff and that thing I mean th this knee is awesome now <laughs> I wish I had done it a, a long time ago but if you have that option and you have get the surgery just get it fixed um, that medication is not good to be taking all that all for that long during that process I gained weight because I couldn't keep active and so not only was I damaging my stomach I was putting more weight back on that I had lost so it was a struggle but thank God I'm healed now and uh, like I said it's been about two and a half years now so I can get back out and I can walk and do and, and I still have a little arthritis in both of my knees the left knee is is okay it it, it works <laughs> but age just puts puts something on especially if you're overweight just try not to if you're young and you're watching this try to get the weight off because that weight is not good on the knees and it damages them so let's see what time I got here I still have a little bit of time but um, that's my story of my knees and now I have strengthened them walking gets makes them stronger so that I can now I can trot a little bit you know in the mornings when I go out so gradually they have come back and they're healed so thank you Lord but the better more you exercise your body the stronger it will be I mean you may not have all the eating down but get that body turn you know keep your body healthy exercise it wants to move it doesn't want to sit so that's my little nugget for the day Thank you for watching. Love you. Peace. Good morning. This is my first time doing this in the morning. I'm on my way to work. I'm trying to be more pro productive with my time. Because I live maybe 10 minutes away from my job. And for the last oh, 15 years I've lived, uh, before, uh, two years ago, I lived like five minutes from my job, and now it's like 10 minutes. So what happens? You estimate the time incorrectly, and you never, uh, never factor in the fact that there is traffic, and that there could possibly be an accident or whatever. So... I did better when I was a manager and supervisor. Now I'm a, uh, I'm somewhat of a leader, but I don't really have managed people. 
thank God he got me out of that. <laughs> Managing people can be the best thing that you ever did on a job or it can be the worst because <laughs> people are difficult and they get more difficult as the years go on. My first few years of being a supervisor and, and then management weren't so bad. But um, as times changed and people are, I don't want to show where I work. <laughs> as time change and people are more difficult, it can be um, more challenging. And, and I say that all of this to say that I'm back back to where I need to I, I need to manage my time better because I get to work on time but it's right on time and I for years was a person that if you, you don't get there five minutes before your start time you're late to me that was the way it was well I'm one of those late people now I need to manage my time better and be here on time. So, like I said, I'm not late, but I'm, I'm getting there just on time. And that has to stop. This has only been in the last year that I've been like this. And I just, I don't know. I don't know what my problem is. I'm getting older, a little groggier. And I, I get up on time because most mornings I get up in time enough to go for a walk. The The problem is when I'm putting on my makeup and I get out of the shower and I'm just, you know, underestimating the time. And then before I know it, it's 8.30 and I should be leaving and I don't have my hair fixed yet. So I got to be better about managing my time because like right now I'm a, I'm, I'm going to get there on time but <laughs> I just don't like it and it doesn't make me feel good and my husband's yelling at me you gotta go you gotta go you, 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 you're you not on time I'm like okay 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 but um, mornings have become kind of uh, challenging so but we will talk again. This is Debbie Blog Day. I will see you at lunchtime. Bye. Good day, people. It's at my lunch break. Lunch break with Debbie. Just got a text from my husband. Um, I don't have much to talk about today. It's kind of gloomy day here in Florida. It's chilly for lunchtime, usually the lights, usually, uh, not the lights, but the sun is usually out by now, and um, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back, and I uh, had to meet my husband so that he could take my vehicle for the day, and uh, so, yeah, that's I have to take a break <laughs> but it's all good like I said I'm not not much to talk about today but um just want to be an encouragement for everyone out there um, life can be hard and I, I struggle I tell you I don't know if I've mentioned it on this platform but on our uh, couples relationship channel I have talked about um, I suffer with depression occasionally and a year well it's been more than a year two years ago I really suffered with it because I was not feeling successful at my job successful in life or anything but found solutions to that and I'm at a good point in my life right now. I'm enjoying my job, enjoying doing this channel, and encouraging people. So, 
we're going to talk about that more as I get deeper into um, doing my blogs and letting you in more into our lives. Looking forward to that this year and looking forward to try to make this channel successful to help people. Stay warm. It's really cold out there in some places. I know my friends up north and stuff, you all stay out of that snow and bundle up. Keep warm. Love you guys. Peace.